Good morning, Overcoming by Faith family. Welcome to our service. We are so glad that you decided to join us today. We also want to say welcome to our streaming audience. Would you please stand as we continue to welcome God to join us here? Because we are here for the sole purpose to worship him. Father God, we thank you. We come humbly telling you that we know that it is our job just to honor appreciate you and Lord God we do that. Father we thank you for all of the things that you have allowed us to go through and Father we especially thank you for this time on this earth that we know that we can hold fast to your faith because you promised to never leave us nor forsake us. Father we pray for the leadership of this country. Father we pray that they have someone around on that council who knows you and will help guide them. Father, your word says the king's heart can go any way, but you have the power to direct it where it will go. Father, we stand on that promise. Father, we also pray for the leadership of our state. Father, we pray for all of those that were affected by Hurricane Helene. People have lost lives. They have lost their houses. And for a lot of us here in this area, it was the losing of the electricity. But Father, we don't count that and we said it wasn't. We said, I didn't say we lost power. We lost electricity because you have all power. Yes. And Father, we thank you for all those people that work diligently to restore electricity to those around us. Father, we count it an honor to come into your presence. We thank you for the anointing that is upon this ministry and we thank you for the anointing that is upon our pastors as well as our leadership team. Father, we thank you that we can come here and worship you freely without having any recourse. Father, we just thank you. We welcome your presence, and we say amen. Would you give God a hand praise as our leadership team? Hallelujah. Here's a good place to give God praise. Can we bless God right there? Has he been good? Has he been merciful? Come on, come on, bless the Lord right there. He's so worthy. Can you tell two people around you, God's been good to me? God's so been so good to me. I just can't tell it all. Come on, clap those hands. Come on, let's clap this morning. Hey, God, we give you glory. We're going to sing a few songs. Let me see if you know them. Song says this. Water you turned into wine. And you open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Hey, none like you. Sing it with me. Say, into the darkness. Into the darkness you shine. Yeah, and it's out of the ashes. Out of the ashes we There's rise. There's no one like you. Like Is that anybody's you. testimony? There's none like you. None we going to make one big praise team today. Let's do it. Our God is greater, say. Our God is greater. Strong. Our God is stronger. High. you are higher than any Let's other. call him, say, healer. Our God is healer. Awesome man.
like Jehovah. There's no God 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 like Jehovah. I need us to say it together. See, there's no yeah. Can you tell a neighbor there's no one like him? No one. That's why I serve him this morning. Hey, no one that's in there. See, that's no one. You get the glory. You get the honor. You get the praise. See, that's no you to say this. Say, nobody like you. Nobody like you. You got a testimony in here. Say, nobody like you. 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 Let me give you another one. Let me see if you know this one. How great is our God. Sing with me how I hear y'all. It's our God. All will see. Say, all will see. How great. How great. How great is our God? Sing with me, yeah. Sing with me, how great is our God? All will see it. If you see it this morning, I need you to lift that up. It's our God. Hey, I can see how great you are. That's you and say, Be on the name of our Father. I feel a praise rising right here. Come on, lift that up. Let's go. I'm ready. Hey, say this. Say, he really is a great king. Yes, sir. Say, he really is a great. He really is a great God. Tell your neighbor, he really. He really is a great. I try to man. I know it. He really. Hey, say, he really. He really is a great God, He really is a great God. Hey, I know it for myself. He really is a great God. He really is a great God. Let's go. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. Say you are great. And greatly to be praised. Nobody like you. I found nobody like you. That's who you are. So how great is our God? Sing with me. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. All will see it. All will see how great. How great is our God? If you see His greatness, I need you to lift up a praise right there. If you see it, I see his greatness. You walked in the building, so I see his greatness. You got the active use of your limbs, I see it. I dare you to look around you and just say, I see his greatness. Hey, I'm in the land of the living, I see his greatness. Now, one more time, clap your hands, give God praise, because his greatness is in the room. Hey, his greatness is in the room. Can we have a little more church this Sunday morning? One more time, clap your hands and say his greatness is in the room. Ooh, now give a great God a great praise. Hallelujah. Everybody clap, clap. We're going to take it back a little bit. Is that all right? I see you dancing. You know this is says, Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Say he's our, he's our, he's our, 
make it in Jesus. Oh my God. Hey, I make it in Jesus. Tell a neighbor, say I make it in Jesus. The storm can't move me. Hey, cause I make it in Jesus. Death can't take me down. Hey, cause I make it in Jesus. You ought to clap your hands. Hey, hey, cause I make it in Jesus. I make it in Jesus. I make hey, hey, hey. I make it in Jesus. I'm going to another one. I get joy when I think about. 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 Oh, I get happy when I think about. I get happy when I think about. the Lord for he is worthy to be praised y'all remember that? oh magnify the Lord for he is worthy to be praised let's go Hosanna Hosanna blessed be the rock blessed be the rock blessed be the rock of our salvation Hosanna Hosanna blessed be the rock blessed be hey do it one more time. Clap those hands. Oh, magnify the Lord. My God, for he is worthy to be praised. Y'all know that one. Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, for he is worthy to one big cry. Hold him. Blessed be. Blessed be the. Go to church. Blessed be the Say blessed be the blessed be the blessed be the rock. Say power in the rock. Power in the power in the rock. Hey, say love in the oh 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 oh. Hey, say Jesus is it. Jesus. 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 Hey, Jesus, one more time. Everybody turn, turn. Jesus is the rock. We got to leave it alone, but it feels too good. Hey, Jesus is the rock. Yeah. Jesus is the rock. Can I do one more, one more? Song says, oh, what he's done for me. Oh, what he's done for me. Oh, what he's done for me is oh, I never shall forget what he's everybody can say. Oh, everybody say, Oh, what he's done for me. I hear y'all. Oh, what he's done for me. Say, Oh, what he's done for me. Never shall forget. One more time. Say, Oh, say, Oh. Never shall fall. I never shall fall. I made a way out of no way. I opened doors no man could close. I never shall fall. I healed me. 
I say me. Clap those hands, say no. Never shall fall. Say no. Never shall fall. Say no. 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 Say no. Clap those hands, say never shall fall. Never shall forget. Never shall forget. Everybody clap those hands. Have you tried, Jesus? He's alright. 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 If you tried him and you know he's good, somebody give God praise. I tried him. And I know he's good. I tried him and I know he heals. I tried him and I know he saves. I tried him and I know he turns. I tried him. Tell your neighbor, say, I tried him. Find somebody else, say, I tried him. I tried him. And he's been good to me. One more time, you got five seconds if you tried Jesus and he's all right. Give God a good praise right there. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. We tried him here at Overcoming My Faith, and we see he's doing amazing things. Look at the screen and see what God is doing. Christina, are you ready to film our 2024 Fall Festival? Oh my gosh, it is that time of year. You know what? We have done some amazing, I mean, flat out just epic Fall Festival promo videos. I mean, I remember when we did this one. Candy, 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 candy. We're going ninja style. Ooh. Is this in the Sanctuary in five? Ooh, we going Kung Fu fighting this year. <laughs> You know what, y'all? At this point, you should already know what to do. Just buy candy, y'all. Just buy candy. That's all I got. I'm tired, I'm out of breath. We do this every year. 
Yep, that's right. You heard it. The best way for you to give is to give monetary gifts because that way we can buy candy and books. So go ahead and visit us online at overcomingbyfaith.org. Go to that giving page and click Fall Festival Donation. Or you can just scan that QR code that you see on the screen and it'll take you straight there. And then those of you who are my business owners, guess what? We take business donations too. So make sure you donate to overcomingbyfaith.org so we can have the most candy ever for our annual Fall Festival 2024. Hey guys, it's that time of the year, our annual Fall Festival event. This year's event will be held at the Overcoming My Faith campus wear your favorite costume. But please, no witches, ghosts, or ghouls. <laughs> and come enjoy yourself. We will have inflatable games, bouncy houses, carnival rides, and so much more. And of course, Candyland. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Remember, it's free and open to the public. We can't wait to see you. Good morning, Overcome by Faith family and friends. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand for all that he is doing in this place. For those of you who don't know, um, Fall Festival is an alternative that we provide for our various families, it's kids and kids of all ages. And instead of them, you know, knocking on doors, saying trick or treat to get candy or going to haunted houses and all that stuff, we said no need and just say, no, you need, don't, don't go do stuff like that. We have a Bible study for you where we're going to talk about Mary and Joseph. It's like, yeah, I'm sure they want to hear about Mary and Joseph, but they also want some candy and some rides and some fun and wear some costumes. And so uh, we provide that for our entire community. And so it's one of our major community outreaches that we have every single year. So we convert our field to a giant carnival with carnival rides, inflatables, and their favorite. The kids come in costume and they walk through what we call Candyland, where they go to one area and they give you, they'll get a bunch of bubble gum and they go to another area and they'll get some lollipops. Another area they get chocolate. And so that's what's called Candyland. So in order for us to make Candyland happen, we have quite a few individuals who just donate. They go online and go donate to the tab that says Fall Festival where we're able to buy candy in bulk. But then we have some individuals where it's like you have, you know, this hookup or places where you can go and just buy a whole bunch of candy. And we said, do it and buy a bunch of candy and bring it our way and we'll make sure we have it ready for Candyland. So that's our fall festival. It's going to happen on the 26th and it'll be from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Now, in order to make uh, our fall festival happen this year is it requires a good 100 plus volunteers. So if you, uh, quite a few of our members should have already gotten an invite and asking them where they'd like to serve. But if you did not get one, you can feel free to stop by. Uh, it's like a, a first time visitor station is out there. And ushers, I need you to make sure someone is out there for me at the end of service. But at the end of service, just leave your name and your contact information. And we will let you know what some of the various volunteer positions are for uh, Fall Festival. Because it's because of the 100 volunteers that we're able to make it happen. Some volunteers help kids line up for rides. Some help with inflatables. Some help pass out candy for candy. Candyland, some smile and say welcome. You know, whatever you can do to help, we greatly appreciate it. So that's our annual fall festival. Another thing that was mentioned was it's very, very important that you know that tomorrow is the last day to register to vote. And our thing is, is don't complain, vote. Okay, say so don't complain, do what? You need to make sure you vote. And so you have to also make sure that you are officially registered to vote. And we've been sharing with you all throughout the month that there are uh, they have done some voting uh, registration uh, rolls and they've done some purging. Not sure why. You know, I don't know if it's everybody who don't like chocolate got purged. You know, I don't know what their reasoning was behind purging some names, but I know some names have been purged. And so it's very, very important that you check to make sure you're not in that number. And so there is, you can uh, put your camera over that QR code and uh, confirm that you are still an active 
uh, you have an active registration. Uh, we've had quite a few to say, yes, I'm still there. And then, but I've had some that says, I am gone. It is saying I am inactive. And so uh, some of you, you may have, you, you may have been active last month, but now they have purged again and have you now as inactive. I even saw a report the other day where uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes was listed as inactive. And of course, he had to go ahead and say, ah, oh, you guys made a mistake and I need to be active again. So don't take it for granted. And especially those of you who just, if you're going to be, you're 17, but you'll be 18 by, no, I think it's in November 1st. Where are my, my voting people? But something like that. Is, is that right? They have to be, I think, I think that's correct. If it's not November the 1st, it's, it's before you vote. It's up, you're 18. And is that right? November the 5th, you have to be 18 by November 5th. Okay, it, and you can't actually, actually register to vote. So, but if you live in Georgia, I don't know what is the last day to register in South Carolina, Alabama, Florida, especially a lot of college students we have in here. I don't know when is your last day where you can register. But still use that link because I believe even that link you're able to tell, ask it for a, a, a state other than Georgia. But that's a very, 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 very important link right there so you need to make sure you check to see if you are active and if you are not you have until tomorrow to make sure you register because there's no need to complain what did you do instead of complaining you do what vote you have to vote and so we'll be giving you a whole lot of additional information in um in uh the, the, for the remainder of the month to help you be successful in making your decision regarding uh the voting process Okay, I'd like to now take a moment to acknowledge any first-time visitors that we have in the house. We have a special gift for you. It has our devotional that just came out in September and a whole lot of wonderful, neat things in here that we'd just like to bless you with. So if you are a first-timer here at Overcome My Faith, all you have to do is wave your hand from your seat, and they will give you that special gift box. Just not going to make you stand up, say words, no treat, nothing like that. Just wave your hand. So thank God for our first-timers. Give the Lord a hand. There are some individuals, if you are online and you are first timer online, just in the chat, say I'm new and we'll make sure you also get your first time gift. Okay, this is, uh, during this particular season, we have a lot of awesome things going on. One is you have an opportunity to vote, make your voice known. You have, we also have one of the, the biggest uh, community outreaches in this area, and that's our fall festival, where people who don't even know anything about Overcome by Faith find out they can come to this festival, and it's free. And so we have an opportunity to serve the community. That's an uh, amazing thing that we do every year in, in October. Um, we've been given an opportunity to uh, have a, uh, a trunk or treat option in one of the schools around the corner. So, And of course, a school asks for something, we're going to say yes. So we have that opportunity. Opportunity. But there is something else that also happens around this time of year. And it's something designed for ladies only. So ladies, I'd like you to, every lady in the house, regardless of your age, if you can please stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. All ladies in the house. Now I'm going to give you, play. you could play a little bit of my first song. I'm going to give you a little bit of history regarding ladies only. That's my happy birthday song. Okay, a little bit of history. Back in 1994, we had our very first ladies only conference in 1994. Some of you were not born in 1994, but that's what we had. Our very first ladies conference. We only had this building. We didn't even have the youth building on the other side. We had this building. So in this building, we had a ladies conference. And we had our breakout sessions and they went to the classrooms to the left and the classrooms on the right. And we had a wonderful time in ladies only ministry. That was in 94. Then eventually in 96, we built the building that was in the front and we had breakout sessions that went even on the other side. We had lunch boxes and all kinds of things that we passed out the lunch boxes in the overpass. This ministry grew so much until pastor threw us out the building. Come on, say he threw us out the building. He was just challenging us not to be narrow. So we actually took our conference to the Savannah Civic Center. And at the Savannah Civic Center, we had our conference there for years and years and had a marvelous time. 
But one of the things I noticed at the Civic Center is that the ladies would come to the conference and then they'd go home and they're doing this, that, and the other, taking care of kids. And, and everybody is just wiped, they'd run around in circles, they're trying to come to the conference, they're running around in circles until we said, we need to do something different. Come on, say, we need to do something different. A whole lot of individuals started having ladies' conferences, not only national lady conferences, but every church and their grandmama was having a ladies' conference. So we said, oh, we need to do something different. So we decided to take our conference to another location. So for 15 years, come on, say for 15 years, we were in Savannah. Come on, for 15 years, we were in Savannah. Come on, ladies, work with me. We got to do the move. For 15 years, get your hands ready. Say, we were in Savannah. We were in Savannah. But then God spoke. Come on, say God spoke. And he said, it's time to make a change. So we decided to change what we changed to, Mikey. Oh, I forgot. I, didn't, I got to sing this for the, for, the, for the first 15 years. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to ladies only. Happy birthday. Come on, ladies. To you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay, now, after 15 years, it was time to make a change. 15 years in Savannah. Come on, say 15 years in Savannah. Happy birthday to you. But then we decided to make a change. Come on, ladies. Get your move on. Come on. You hear the music? You can't, you can't do this. All my new ladies. Anytime you hear that music, that means it's time to dance. If I'm 68, you got to wiggle a little bit, you guys can. For the next 15 years, we have taken ladies only to the island. We're going to the island. We're going to the island. Where are we going, ladies? Going to the island. Going to, going to. After being in Savannah for 15 years, we decided to take a trip. We decided to take a trip, not across the Atlantic Ocean, not across the Caribbean Sea, not across the Pacific, but we decided to take a trip all the way across the Savannah River. Just a few miles crossing the bridge over the Savannah River. Then you make a little hook so whatever freeway, freeway that is. Then eventually you get to, is it 278? And it's this thing, it's this road in South Carolina called 278. But while you're going out 278, you'll be going to the island, an island called Hilton Head, an island where people from all across the globe come to the island of Hilton Head. And so the ladies of Ladies Only Escape for the past 15 years have been at the island. Come on, ladies, get your dance on. All my college-age young ladies, you'll get it. You, you'll get it, you'll get it. Get your dance on. Get your dance on. So, we will be celebrating 30 years of Ladies Only Ministry. Come on, shop 30 years. 30 years. So 15 have been Savannah. So our next 15 years have been on the island. On the island. We've been having a wonderful time. And it's called Ladies Only Escape. Designed for ladies of all ages. I've had them as young as three months old wearing a little lanyard with the ID badge on their neck and a ladies conference t-shirt that was tucked. All the way to those of us who are nice and seasoned. Hallelujah. And that's what makes this conference so unique. That it's designed for ladies of all ages. This year, our theme is God's masterpiece, which means that God did a good job when he made us ladies. Now we love the brethren. Yeah, thank God for you, you know. But it's all about the ladies. The ladies only escape. Now we do have quite a few husbands that come to the island because on the island they have fishing. 
and they have golfing, and they have all those wonderful things. So we don't ban you from the island. You you're welcome to come, especially if you're paying for your wife's hotel and lunch. You you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> but we are just so thrilled that we are going back to the island. So this is your official invitation. You may have a seat. Now, with it being 30 years, we were still trying to figure out what to do, what to do. And so we decided that we wanted to take a spin. You can still give me my island music just a little softer. Um, we decided to stay home. We're trying to encourage ladies who are part of Ladies Only Ministry over the, any time within the 30 years, to come on back home, almost like a homecoming is our approach. And so one of the things about this particular conference is that I know we've had, you know, some big name people, you know, we've had this person, that person, and, and all of that. But one of the things that I so love about this ladies ministry, and I've had people even tell me this, is that our ladies don't come to the conference because of who's speaking. They come into the conference because of what the conference does for them. And so it's one of those where the concept of is, is escape is to let women know that God is always speaking but often we don't keep ourselves still long enough to hear him. So that's why we have to step away from the assignment, step away from the laundry, step away from the job just for a moment to give God time to speak. And sometimes the ladies, you just need to take a nap. And then once you take a nap, then it's like, okay, God, I hear you. But we're running around so much till we totally miss God. And so that's how, that's what the, how, how the conference is actually designed. So we decided that what's going to happen this year is that we're going to think of some homegrown things, individuals that have just been a part of the family for, for a minute, or they've been here, or they came a long time ago. So one of the suggestions given to us by a nationally known speaker, one of the speakers we had last year actually referred this person to us, and it's someone who's been around us for a long, long time. Her name is, you guys ready for my first person? Her name is Pastor Tamika from Hope City place your attention to the screen to see a taste of Pastor Tamika. Help us with that, oh God. Because some of you feel like that's all you've ever gotten in from life was a plate of problems. Ooh. Ooh. Some of you feel like that's all life has handed you was a plate full of problems and so it has set your expectation even in Christ that all I'm ever going to get from God is problems but rise up and awaken because the God you serve has more and better for you he is with you when it rains he is with you in the storm he said if you go through a desert I'm with you if you ride through a flood baby I'm gonna walk with you if you go through a fire I'm gonna be right there with you God is gangster what do I mean by that God will ride up with you God will ride up on your enemies. God will put a hedge of protection around you. God will stand up against your enemy. God will send you a promise and be like, what? Come she on, mind, and get yeah. Of praise. So Pastor Mika said, God is gangster. <laughs> she been with us for a long time. I remember the very first time she came, she actually did a creative dance. And we didn't even know, you know, we knew that she and her husband were new pastors in town. And, and uh, she did a creative dance. And she's been coming every year ever since. So it's like, okay, God. One of the referrals given to us by someone nationally known is someone that's right here in Savannah. So we have the honor of having Pastor Mika. Now we have someone that a lot of you do not know, but she is extremely well known across the globe. And she is going to be ministering to the teenagers and the college agers. Her name is Alexandra. When I said that there are some things we're going to have to rival that rival our faith, I meant it. There are going to be some things you're going to have to lay down in order for God to be full and complete in you. There are going to have to be some things you lay down and let go of in order for God to be full and complete in you. Some people are going to have to leave your life. Some places are going to have to change. Some behaviors are going to have to die. Some things are going to have to go. They're just going to have to go. If you allow James 1, 2 through 4 to actually be real and true in your life, you will allow the hard places to transform you or you can have a thin faith. Come on, give the Lord a hand for Alexandra. 
And then finally, our musical guest this year is someone that I had a long, long time ago when we were actually still having ladies' conference in this building. And her name is Marette Brown Clark. I just want to praise you forever, forever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, for all that you've for done. All. to give the Lord a hand. So the concert is on Saturday evening and it is open to the public. And so that's when we have everyone travel to the island, spend the day on the island and have a wonderful time. And then we have this concert that's designed for the whole family. And so we want to encourage you now, put my QR code up. All the ladies in the house, I need you to aim your cameras at this code and register to come. We have the particular conference, this hotel is resting right on the coast where we can look out our window and see God's amusing, um, amazing Atlantic Ocean. It's right there on, on the beach and we have a magnificent time. And so we want to, you to know that the registration is actually free because we have quite a few ladies and gentlemen like Pastor who have chosen to be uh, conference supporters and they pay enough money so that we can have the registration for free. This allows us, the moms to bring their daughters and their granddaughters and so forth. That's how we can have the conference for all ages. My college age young ladies, every single year I have women and men in this ministry who pay for you to go to the conference. And so you just have to be a person who comes on a regular basis, not someone who just pop up for the conference. It's like, hey, like, no, 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 no. That's why it's really important that you are checking in when you have your, your, your meals and various events that we have here. Because for those young ladies who are college age and part of our college age ministry, we pay for your hotel. We pay for it. Well, they, they pay for your hotel. They pay for your food. And they will make sure, quite a few of you drive to the island, but if you can't drive, we will make sure a bus will come and pick you up. That is something that these wonderful members provide for our college-age young ladies. So make sure you register. This, the hotel rates right now are extremely low because of our conference. And so I encourage you to do not delay to do your hotel reservations. If you go to this particular hotel, it's the same hotel. It's just instead of it being a Marriott, it's now a Hilton. If you just go to that website, the rooms are 200 something dollars. But because of our conference rate, it's half the price. So you don't want to miss it. Take advantage of it. Some of you may even want to have it extended days because, you know, have some days before and after because those discounted rates are good even uh, for a few days prior to our conference and even a few days after our conference. So we will be celebrating 30 years. Come on, say 30 years. Give the Lord with my hand. Uh, where's the pastor? I just want to praise you forever and ever. Huh? Oh, you've done, done for me. Blessings, blessings and glory and honor. They all belong to you. They all Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me, for blessing me. Oh, oh, I got caught up in, in the island. There. <laughs> no, 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 we're going to let everybody know what time it is. No, no Pastor. Y'all want to know what happened? No. Yeah, how many want to know what happened? No, y'all don't want to know. What had happened know. was it wasn't my turn yet. It wasn't. Because I'm thinking, it wasn't, oh, Pastor got me hanging. No, what my turn. But, yes, yes, yes. So I, there I, is. Let's, uh, go, we, ahead. go ahead, fix it. I'm so sorry, Pastor. Go ahead, fix it. Go ahead, and my go ahead. wonderful husband, I'm no, so sorry. Everybody went, where the pastor? Where the pastor? 
I'm hey, sitting so over here sorry. minding my business. And if wait a minute, you I they, just knew you no, were no, being no, special. No. And one of my special members over here tapping me. <laughs> you holding me up there. I said, no, I'm not. So go ahead, I'm sorry. Anyway, I am here. so sorry. Do you right, forgive it me? Do you forgive me? I'm using it in King James. I do forgive me. He told me he got to pray about it. <laughs> he got to pray before he bring forth the word. He got to forgive me before he can pray. Anyway, we have been singing a lot of old school. Have you been enjoying it? And I forgot the name of the song again, but it is. Um, okay, if you guys hear what, what can wash away my sins, what do you think? What can make me whole again? We're going to sing about the blood of Jesus. Come on and give the praise team a hand as they come. Hallelujah. Do me a favor. Jump back to your feet. We're going to sing this song. We're going to learn this thing together. While you're jumping up, can you tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I'm grateful for the blood of Jesus. If you really meant that, can you give God a praise right here? Hey, come on, tap those hands. We're going to try this thing again. Let's try it. So listen. What can wash away my sins? You said nothing but the blood. Ooh, y'all sound good. Jesus. And what can make me whole again? You say nothing but we gonna the teach blood it to you. Let's go. Say nothing. Nothing, nothing but, but the blood. blood. Say, oh. oh, it's easy. Nothing, nothing but, but the blood. Clap those hands. Let's go. Oh. The blood that covers blood us. That covers say, oh. oh. What can free us? I'm going to teach it to you again. Say nothing but the nothing but the blood. Oh, nothing but the blood. Oh, the blood that covers us. I see y'all. Say, oh, what can free us? The blood of Jesus. I'm going to sing the first word you said. Glory, glory, I sing. To the risen King who cleanses me, to the Lamb that was slain, hey, what can wash away my every stain? Say nothing but the say oh, nothing but the blood. Say oh, the blood that covered. Y'all got it. Oh, what can free? Do it again. Say nothing but the nothing but the Say oh nothing but the Say oh the blood that comes in Oh one can free Hey the blood of Jesus I'm going straight to that hymn So singing oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount I know Say nothing but the Make a big cry Say oh, say oh, grace Hey, now I hear you Say no I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. Listen, one day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, hey, and I know it was the blood for me. Everybody, you say, I know. I know it was the blood, hey. I know it was the blood, I know, I know it was the blood for who? For me. Hey. One day when I one was See one day when I was He died upon One day when I was, 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 was a wretched death But one day when I He died upon One day when I He died upon Let's go I know it was I know it was the blood Thank you for your blood 
that makes me white as snow. You say, no one, nothing but, nothing but Jesus. If you're still thankful for that blood, can you take a good 10 seconds and give God glory? Hey, for the blood that covers, for the blood that cleanses, for the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Thank you for your blood. Hey, you got five more seconds. Thank you for your blood. Praise God. Father, we thank you today for the difference you make in our lives. Your blood came to help us make a difference in the world. We're called to love you, but we're also called to touch those around you. So thank you for your blood that forgave us and empowered us to make a difference. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. You had a good time so far? Can you give God a big praise? Come on, amen. All right. You may be seated. Welcome all of you that are online. Hey, Teresa, good to see you out there. Miss Anderson, good to see all you folks streaming in. We appreciate your presence with us today. And uh, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I want to say we got one more thing I want to say to you that's really important. Making a difference is what makes us different, I pray. Mr. Bishop, come on up and tell us about there's a wagon coming that we're going to sign today. This is a celebration of a wonderful week or month for people who fight this great fight. Tell us about it, Ms. Bishop. Morning, Overcoming by Faith, and uh, to Southern Motors of Savannah, along uh, in, in honor of National Breast Cancer Awareness Month and uh, the St. Joseph's Candler Mammography uh, Project, where they provide free mammography for those that, of course, don't have insurance or coverage, where they have a pink Jeep that they're going to be debuting today and Overcoming by Faith is honored to be one of the first churches that they visit. It's going to be outside at the end of service. There is no charge for coming. There's no charge for you participating. Uh, the goal is simply to get 1,000 signatures on there. So if you've ever wanted to be one of those individuals to get your name in print, this is the opportunity to go just sign the Jeep. They're going to be taking lots of pictures and you'll be able to uh, also view those on WSA so again, the pink Jeep, the pink Jeep uh, will be here, and Maquan Green is such a fan and friend of Overcoming by Faith. He made us aware of it, and he is the driver today, and so he'll be here at 12 noon. All right. Thank well, you. we'll be there, and listen. Uh, come on. Amen. That's wonderful. Now, listen. This is legal vandalism. <laughs> you get to write your name on a car. You know, you can't do this without going to jail. So you need to thank the Lord for your chance to say you, you care. So um, I want to thank God for you and your faithfulness. I want to pray right now for our offering. I thank God for the faithfulness of God's people. We give away so much. We do so much, thousands of dollars a year. I've seen God bring us from, from where we were years ago to where we are now. And, and what makes it possible is our giving. So I want to pray for our offering today. And, um, you know, everybody is not in the same place. But how many believe you're going to a better place? Financially. Come on, amen. You believe it? Okay. Now, some of you didn't participate right then. I'm going to give you one more chance. How many of you believe you're going to a better place financially? Raise your hand. You believe it? All right. There is something coming up um, on this coming Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. I called the Prosperity Team. And from 7 to 8.15, it's an hour and 15-minute discussion, online only, not in person. Saturday though the Saturday, next Saturday at 10 o'clock, there'll be another meeting, uh, which is the prosperity team meeting, and that's for one hour. How long did I say it's going to be? You know I'd be meaning it when I say it, right? So, yeah, okay. One hour, and that's from, nine, from 10 to 11, and that's going to be a, uh, the in-person prosperity team discussion. I can't talk about money here long because we don't have time. Uh, so in the prosperity team, I'll talk more about money. This coming weekend, this coming week, we're going to talk about uh, how to set your financial priorities. Now, there is a book we're reading. Now, if you get your phone out, you can get that cue card, right? And you can join the Prosperity Team. There's almost 400 of you that already joined it. And so I'll be sending more and more information now. You get your cameras out, take a picture, and you instantly become a member of the team. You get information. 
there, there are going to be prosperity tips, all kinds of things I'll be sending to you eventually. So just kind of hang with me. We're moving the weather and all the things we've had. But I'm so glad we made it through it. How about an amen to that, right? We made it through it. So join the prosperity team, even online. Make sure you sign up. And we're going to meet. Now, if you can't be in person, we always have it both places, online and in person, and it'll be on demand eventually, okay? Having said that, uh, let's see, prosperity team. And then at 11 o'clock next week, you already heard it mentioned, I'm doing a special leadership development teaching in person here at the church and that's going to be for hour and 15 minutes again and that's going to be from 11 to 12 15 next saturday so you can stay over for the whole day if you want to do prosperity team at 9 10 hang over for the for the special teaching i've not done here on on leadership and team it's really good you don't want to miss it so having said that that'll both be here and online too so but come on in person and hang out with me i'd love to see you now having said all that let's pray for our offering today you want to prosper, raise your hand as high as you want to be blessed. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you. No hands up. Go on and bless those whose hands up, Jesus. Come on. Hands up, hands up. <laughs> Lord, I pray for your grace upon us for meeting our needs. Some of us are tithers. We honor you with the first 10% of our income. Some don't have it. Some are struggling. God, they, get, they got 1%, 2%. But I pray whatever they have, they honor you faithfully. They rise up and believe, oh God, that the hand of God would be strong upon them. I thank you, Lord God, for blessing and prospering them. I pray that they would learn how to manage their resources and not be afraid to prosper. The good we want to do requires resources, so I thank you in advance for meeting every need, and we give you all the praise. And lastly, I want to pray, God, for the special fund that we have. It's called Building a Future. Everybody say Building a Future. Father, bless those who are supporting that every month because we're building a future, paying down debt, building up our future. Our ability to invest in our future as a church, to renovate, all those things are tied to that fund. So I thank you for those who will every month commit to that and say, I want to be a part of that Building a Future campaign. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. So you pray about that. Thank you for what you give. I, am make, I want to make it really clear. We can't do it without you. Come on, so we can't do it alone. Come on. No, say it like you mean it. Come on. We can't, can't do it alone. So I thank you. I'm not selling chicken. I'm not selling barbecue. I'm not selling cookies. I'm not selling candy. I believe in the power of tithes and offerings. How about an amen to that? Can we give God a big hand for blessing our church? Come on, come on, come on. Blessing our church. Blessing our church. If you've never given before, you can do it two ways. You can give at the give boxes on the way out, or you can do it this way. Watch how we give here. Overcoming by Faith family and friends, thank you for your support and generosity as we continue to do the work that God has called us to do. It's time to receive our offering, and there are many ways that you can give. Visit the Overcoming by Faith website at overcomingbyfaith.org backslash gift. You may download the Overcoming by Faith app. You may mail your gift to P.O. Box 15789, Savannah, Georgia, 31416 or text the dollar amount to 912-307-3077. As you give, remember this declaration, good seed sown in good soil. You can follow along with today's message by simply opening the Overcoming by Faith Ministries app. Scroll down to Sermon Notes, and today's notes will open within the OBF app or open directly in the Bible app. Or if you are viewing online you can click the Sermon Notes button on the live stream page. If you are viewing on YouTube or Facebook, access the notes from the description area. Father, we thank you for the word today and for what we will talk about. May it bring life, health, and strength. I, I consider it a privilege, Lord, to share just a few minutes with your people. We honor you and praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. I have a simple message that I want to share with you today. One of my staff members, Erin Smith, came to me today, and Erin, she was really amazing. She's, um, she came to me, and she asked, she said, part of her job, you know, is to uh, get, gain, get the title for the messages, and then they have this whole thing they do. And she said, hey, what was the message again? And, and I said, committed to God and myself. Say that with me, please. Come on. Committed, committed to God and myself. So when, she, when I told her, she kind of looked like, really? And I thought, you know what that means? I said, what do you think I'm going to talk about? I said, first of all, Aaron, it's easy for people to understand the first part of it, committed to God. Because in church, that's what we tell people, right? Be committed to God, pray, go to church, whatever. And the emphasis is on you being faithful to God. But I said, here's the second part of it, committed to yourself. 
committed to God and myself. If we're not careful in church, we communicate a, a, a subliminal message, a message that's kind of under, under the radar that says, it's all about God, not about you. That the whole purpose in you coming here today is for you to serve him and worship him. And you're kind of, you know, not really that important. But I don't think that's what the Bible teaches. I think the Bible teaches that God's committed to you, too. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have, watch this now, everlasting life. I come to give you life and give you life more abundantly. This is about you, all of this. The lights, the stage, the cameras, the online, everything that you see is all about you. Put this jacket on today for you. Shine them shoes so I can talk to you. Because you're important. I dressed up to get in front of you. Because some, there's something about you that's often forgotten about. One of our young men came up to me at the end of the service yesterday, at the end of the last service, and he says, and he's a little brilliant person. You know, he's, you know, he's a little brilliant people. He's a brilliant person. And he came up to me, O.C. did. Pastor has a very good message. <laughs> he said, but you know what would be good, too? Talk about how to be concerned about yourself but not be selfish. I said, you're going and preach, boy. I'll let you come up here and do this message. Good thought. It's so easy, though, to think that any thought about yourself is selfish. I have a way I, I, I word it. I say, I'm not selfish. I'm self-concerned. I'm just concerned about me. I want to make sure I love you, but I got to make sure I'm okay too. Amen. Give you a verse for it. Matthew 22, 37. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, right? Amen. Read it slow. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So let's, let's count the love order. You ready? Love God, number one. Who's number two? You. Because you love yourself like you love your neighbor the way you love yourself. So if I don't know how to love myself, I'm not going to love my neighbor well. Come on, say preach it. Get the point? That's a great point. There's, there's one, two, three. I've got to love God, I've got to love me, and then I've got to love you. And I've got to love you the way I love me. I love my wife the way I love me. Love your wife like you love your own body. A lot of times, if you're not careful, your biggest problem is you don't think about yourself. Ever. You're always last. There's something scary about thinking about yourself. Scary, it's almost like you're going to go to hell if you think about yourself. But that's not true, not true at all. The series this month is centered around one word, commitment. Everybody say that word, please. Are you a committed person? What are you committed to? There are four sermons that are going to be in this series that we're going to talk about this month, and it all answers the question for the year. Remember, every year I answer one question. The question for the year is, how do you protect your future? Each month I tell you how you do it. One way you do it is be committed. You have to be a committed person. And there are four areas we're going to talk about this month. One is committed to God and myself. That's the first sermon. We'll do that today. The second thing we'll talk about next week is called committed to avoiding the trap. Can you say that with me, please? Come on. Committed to avoiding the trap. What is the one thing that can trap you? What is the one thing that can really get you? If you know what it is, you know, just uh, don't say it out loud, but you know, you know, it could be love. It could be money. It could be, I don't know what it is insecurity, fear. You have to be committed to avoid the traps in your life. You have to say, I'm not doing that. That's a trap for me. I know it is. And if you can be honest about that, it changes your life. Thirdly, we'll talk about committed to protecting my relationships. Can you say it with me, please? Come on. Committed to protecting my relationships. My relationships are important. Now, you married folks, buckle up. Third Sunday, we're going to talk about that. You know, I'm going to have the double header at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Now, what's funny is the college students told me, oh, you're going to talk about marriage on the third Sunday. I said, yeah, but I'm also talking about relationships. I'm going to talk about dating. I'm going to talk about how you can fall in love and out of love. It's going to be fun. You're going to be great. So it's going to be a big Sunday on relationships, 9-11, two separate sermons. So you can, have, you can join all both of them if you want to. But I'm only going to feed the college students at the church, though. I'm going to tell you all now. <laughs> so the rest of you all going to have to go to the restaurant someplace. But we have a covenant. All in favor of continuing to feed the college students because they're hungry people after every service. Say aye. aye. Anybody opposed? We're going to pray for you. All right. Because they'll boo you. I'm telling you. They want to eat. 
Fourthly, we're going to talk about committed to being fruitful. You will never be fruitful if you're not committed. You have to be committed. And I'm going to tell you, it's hard to do that in a religious environment because if you talk about money or you talk about prosper or anything like that, and I'm not just talking about money, but it's a good place to start. But the church people have a hard time with that. I believe in people making a good living. I believe in treating people fairly. I believe in doing above and beyond. And there's something about being committed to being fruitful. We must be committed to being a fruitful church. We must be committed to saying we're not going to stay where we are. I'll tell you how I mean that. Now watch this. We started this church when I came to this church. I'm going to tell you something. Who wants to know what we started with? Income. You want to know what it was when I came? Uh, anybody, who wants to know? We got three nosy people. Who wants to know? Four? <laughs> five? Okay. Everybody ready? $22,000 a year when I came to the pastor of this church. $22,000 a year. And $70 million later, I'm so glad God blesses beyond that. Come on, say amen. I'm, I'm so glad. That ain't happy enough. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That means, in business terms, you have to, you have to, you have to do 70, $770 million or $700 million worth of business, net 10% to have what we have. Now, some, I want you to understand this. This is an amazing accomplishment. A lot, the, the one thing that I think, though, is so important, and don't think we rich because we don't speak, gave it a speak, we, The college student got most of it right there just eating. <laughs> just <laughs> all the things that all, it costs to do all this. But I said all that to, to make the point. There's something about being committed, committed enough to talk about it, committed enough to be open about it, committed enough to be transparent. If you are not trying to prosper, if you're not trying to be fruitful, both physically, financially, emotionally, if you're not desiring to advance, if you're not desiring to be fruitful in your grades, you'll never be. It's when you determine in your heart, I'm going to class early, I'm going to prepare my papers early, I want to be fruitful in my life. I want to look fruitful, sound fruitful, act fruitful, be fruitful. And when you go through what we went through with these storms, you need to be fruitful. Amen. I'm telling you right now. Do you know in my yard, I'm going to take a break. Do you know in my yard, my tree, some of them just fell down? And it wasn't no little trees. I mean, them dudes was big. And then, you know, the tree people came by, but I had to pay them people. Them, excuse my grandma, them people. They nice, though. They were nice to me. But, and they wonderful. But they, they, had, they, they, they can't come for free. Because they had to climb up the tree, top off the top, off, you know, get up there. And that, that boy was amazing. And then they had the big old crane, and they had the big cranes. And, I mean, it, it was amazing. I mean, it, my neighbor's yard was tore up. You know, the pool was tore up. Things fell all in it. I said, ooh, Jesus. In my backyard, a big one fell, didn't hit the house, thank God. And then, the, then, then it put a bunch of stuff on top of my house. I had to pay the guy to go up there and blow all them, all them leaves off and, because I wasn't going up there. <laughs> I said, I went up there enough in my life. I'm not going back up there again. So he went up there, came out, he blew it all off. And, and then, then, I, then I had my generator. You know, I was good with my generator. I was, I was, Daniel Boone was a man. You know that song? Man, I had my generator. And when I built my house, I said, well, I'm going to run me a pipe in case I want to get a gas one, you know, and, and hook it up to a permanent generator. But before I said, I don't need that. I'm just going to run the pipe so I can do it later. And I'm going to get me a generator. And I just got one I plugged up to the house, plugged up to the house, sends juice up into the house. Felt good first day. Second day. Third day. Like when Jesus rose, I got tired. Man, I told, and then, then I, uh, Christina called. She said, you know, people, people calling me asking about my parents. And she got a nice house, you know. And she said, she said they, they, they asked you where your mom and daddy had. You, you, I told them you were still in the house. You're making me look bad. <laughs> she, said, she, said, you make, she said, people keep saying, why are your parents not with you? Y'all got something going on I don't know about. So I went to the house, enjoyed, praise God, the cool air. You know, when you've been out of Exodus for three days, you feel, you feel saved when you walk in, you know. You feel born again, man. I, man, I walked, took my shoes off, boy. And I went and sat down. And she got a room for me. I went in my little private area. You know, I got to have my own space. I went in my little private area, and I put my feet up. And boy, I was happy as can be. Thank you, Jesus. Ate free food. I like that part. Free food, <laughs> free air conditioning. It was great. Hallelujah. Just go to the refrigerator and just stand there. Just let it work. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, in the middle of all of that, I said, Father, I need to be fruitful so I can do the will of God. And so I can take care of myself. Lift your hands up. Say, Lord, make me fruitful. Come on. 
You didn't say it like you meant it. Come on, say, Lord, make me fruitful. That means you got to do what you got to do to get there. In our talk today, there are three things I want to say that set the stage before I read for you a couple, three verses. It's an impression that I think churches give people. Maybe I'll just read a couple of the verses for you. John chapter 15, there's a verse that says something simple like this. It says, without me, I am, a, I am the vine, you are the branches. Without me, verse 4 and 5 says, you can do absolutely nothing. When people hear this verse, they think that somehow God is saying, you don't have value. But in reality, in this message, I want you to understand that's not true. God's goal is not to communicate to you that you have no value. I heard a guy when he was, his son was, um, he was preaching, and he said, no, I didn't do anything. It was all God. It was all God. I said, no. I said, you studied. You preached. You get some credit. I said, if your son was giving a speech and he did a good job, but if you look back and said, hey, it was all daddy, what would you say? I said, no, no. You, you did that. I may have influenced you, blessed you, but you did that. God, is, God does not think you have no value. Here's how I think sometimes we communicate in church if we're not careful. We're tempted to say to people that there ha- there's no value in themselves. We're tempted to never trust ourselves. We often feel as if we have little value outside of our Christian mission. We are portrayed as the, these unstable, quickly discouraged people that needs several visits to the spiritual gas station called church a week to survive. Hang with me. Don't get lost yet. We can't make a good decision without our spiritual leaders guiding us all of our lives. We will never really develop independence and can never change battle stations or leave our spiritual home churches. Pastor Rick, that sounds like you trying to say don't come to church. No. I'm saying God never wants you to get to a place where you're not able to trust yourself. He's not trying to make you dependent. He's not trying to make you the kind of person. Think about it. You come to church on Sunday, about Tuesday, Wednesday, you're out of gas, spiritual gas. So you've got to come back Tuesday, Wednesday, or you're going to be carnal again. If you miss a week, you've got to go and apologize to the pastor. And it's almost like, well, what kind of life is this? I thought you were going to be strong. I thought, I thought God looks at you and sees a person who's growing. I don't believe that my job is to make you dependent upon me. I want you to come to church. Say amen. Amen. I'm not saying that. I'm saying to you that every parent, every spiritual leader, every person's goal is to do what Ephesians 4.11 says. He gave apostles, prophets, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting or the maturing of the saints. It's all about you growing up. If you don't grow up, you fight, you get lost in foolishness. It's not God's will. God so loved the world that he gave his son. Why? So that you can be strong. Acts 1 and 8, he gave you power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. It's all about empowering you. That's, this whole thing is about you. The lights, the, the, everything, everything you see is designed to help you listen and grow and learn and make it easy for you online and in person. Even the timing of the messages. I'm not going to talk all day. All that's because I need you to grow and learn. That's what we're here for. We're not here to make you dependent. We're not here to make you the kind of person who who feels you can't leave and go to another church. Now, if enough of y'all leave, I'm leaving too. (laughs) I'm not staying here by myself. I'm going to tell you now, I'm checking out. But I think it's important for you to think I'm kidding. I'm serious. I'm real clear. I tell guys, you need to close that church. Ain't nobody there but you. I do. I give that kind of advice. I'm here for one purpose. I want to be the restaurant you come to because you like the food. I want to be the person that you enjoy when you come. We help you grow. We give you the tools, the small groups, the classes, all those things, the community service we do. I'm trying to teach you how to think and how to prosper. That's my job. You should grow here. Come on, amen. You should grow here. Now, what's interesting is there's a verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, that really puts this into a context. I preached on it last week if you saw the online sermon, but let me say it again. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay. We are the jars of clay, okay, in this verse. We have this treasure in jars of clay 
to show that this all-surpassing power, that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side. Watch. We go through hardships. We're hard-pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. He says, you know, we have our challenges. I mean, that's part of the journey. But we are considered a place that God deposits treasure. We have treasures, he says, in these jars of clay. So the question is, how do you see yourself? And how do you view your future? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, there are temptations. I'm going to give you a couple of them. And I'm going to talk about it from my standpoint. These are my four temptations. You ready? Number one. I'm tempted to not trust myself. I am. And you get in front of people all the time, you wonder, your clothes look good, you get your sermon good, you know, you had all hair right, right, you know, you go through all kinds of faces. You know, it's very, you can have, it's very, it can be a, <laughs> a very insecure job. And sometimes if you're not careful, that's how your life can be. Do you trust yourself? Do you, do you believe in you? You want want to believe in God. You want people to believe in themselves. But I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you. I'm tempted not to trust myself. Secondly, I'm tempted to live in the land of if only I had done. You know, with me, there's always a book. You ready for another book? Here we go. Watch this one. Here's another one. It's called, I love this book. It's called If Only dot, 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 Finding Freedom from Regret by Robert Lee Hay. L-E-H-Y, L-E-H-Y. There's something about finding freedom from living with, if only I had done this. You ever did that? And you start doubting yourself. You have no more confidence in you. Oh, if I had only. You want to hear one of my if onlys? Thank you. One nosy person. Well, yeah, that's good. I'm going to tell you. There you go. If only. If only. And this is what I say because I like business. You know, I think, well, I could have started a business along with pastoring. I could have been, you know, maybe done some real estate. I could have sold, could have done. Yeah, I could have been in your business. I could have. That's what I'm thinking. You know, I could have. But I didn't have time to do all that. Not, I didn't have time to do all that. See, that, that's how you lie to yourself. I wouldn't be, how am I going to prepare all these sermons? How am I going to How am I going to get this education? How am, I mean, how am I going to do all that? I can't do all that. All these people, thousands of people. I couldn't, I couldn't pass all these people. I couldn't do television and radio and do all this. See, that's the problem. You're trying to do too much. You're not focused. I vowed to God, I'm focused. This is it. This is it. This is my main thing. This is my main gig. I'm not traveling all over the world. I'm a pastor. I'm not going to be gone all the time. I could be. I could be gone all the time here, there, and yonder. But I said, no, I'm going to go there and pause and maybe there. But I'm not going to be every week. Every, some guys I know love them dearly, but they're gone two or three times a week. Every week. They wave at their wife and children. I said, no, I'm not doing that. I made a covenant. And I stayed with that covenant, and it has rewarded me, and God has been good to me. But I'm telling you, some of you are too spread out. But that's one of those what ifs. Oh, church would have had millions more if you'd done this. Oh, what if? What if? No, I also would be tired. <laughs> and I probably would be cranky like some folks. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, don't be cranky. Come on, don't be cranky. You can be cranky because you're tired. You need a nap. You're always wore out, working all them overtime hours that you give to the government, don't even get any money from it anyway. <laughs> and you just go out and buy something else you don't need. At some point, you got to pause and say to yourself, let me stop playing this what-if game. It, it harassed me constantly. What if, what if I lost some more weight? I wouldn't look this way. Turn to the other side. Just look at the other side. <laughs> look at, just hold it in a little bit. Stop. You just feel bad about everything. You were, you were depressed when you were single because you wanted a husband. Now you got a husband and you want to get rid of him. <laughs> then you wanted children and God gave you children. And you say, oh, God, I'm pregnant again. I can't stand having another child. Then you, I mean, you, no matter what God, God gave you a house, then you fuss about cleaning it up. I had to clean this big old place by myself. You had prayed for grass and now you're just mad because it's dying. You don't want to water it because the water bill is too high. You're living in the land of what if. Why don't you just be happy? Come on, say amen. Why don't you just be happy? Preaching good, I like what I'm saying right now. My time about up. Okay, don't trust myself. I'm tempted 
to live in the land of what if only, if, if only, if only. And then thirdly, I, I'm tempted to admire people that I don't believe, <laughs> that I believe have it all together. I'm tempted to look, look on TV. Ooh, look at them. People you don't even know. You got to look their story up. They messed up more than you. I'm not putting anybody down on TV or media. I'm, I love theater and all that. I'm just saying you're tempted to believe stuff's not true. She looked good. Yeah, because she got all that makeup and that stuff will catch you in the morning. <laughs> catch, catch him before. <laughs> Let me stop number four. I'm tempted to misjudge the facts about my life circumstances. I'm, I'm guilty of this. I'll, I'll start judging myself and say, wait a minute, hold on for a second. You'll love this one. You'll love this one. I did that real, real estate thing. I said, oh, yeah, I should have done this. I could have had so many houses. And then I start thinking, okay, how many houses would you have had to sell to get to $777 million? That's a lot of houses. You know, it's 84 a month. <laughs> Jesus, help me, God. A year, I'm sorry, a year. And then about seven, I'd have to sell seven houses a year at $200,000 each a month. I'm sorry, a month. That's a lot of houses to sell every month. I didn't know how to do that back 43 years ago. I mean, I was lying to myself. Some of you are lying to yourself. You just as guilty because you don't have money. You didn't have that kind of intelligence back then. You, you can't, you, could, you college students need to stop all this. You're supposed to be rich. You ain't, you, this is your broke season. Embrace it. This is your sewing season. You're not supposed to be rich yet. You ain't supposed to be married yet. You ain't ready for no man. You better can deal with yourself. You don't need no man and children. You need to stop all this. Stop all that. You just lying to yourself. You go all depressed about what you think you need. You don't need all that. You wouldn't like it if you had it. You can't keep a boyfriend for three months. How are you going to keep a husband? How are you going to keep a wife? Fall in in love, out of love. I'm preaching good. Come on, talk to me now. I'm telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to say something, but I'm really out of time. Let me say this real quick. No, I'm going to say it I'm gonna, real quick. I'm going to say it. You like to make love all the time. Okay, keep on making love. There's a price tag. Yeah. Emotional, financial, physical. It's all kind of price tag. Yeah. See, sometimes you don't want to wait because you want everything right now because you feel it. Let me tell you something. There's a price tag for feeling. You lie to yourself, misjudge the facts about your life. Think it's all about because your daddy wasn't there, your mama wasn't there. You need to stop. These, listen, you grown now. Let them find their way. What they didn't do for you, you can't change. And you've got to go forward in your life. Come on, say my life. My life. I got to quit. Here we go. Quotes from the book I just mentioned to you. Ready? He said, there are moments that each of us get caught up in, in thinking. I could have, would have, should have. And we are off and running, being chased by our regrets, and some of us never escape it. Every day, shoulda, coulda, woulda. What if, what if? How do I manage it? The way David did his. There's four things David did. Remember David, David went to check on Goliath, he went to see his brothers. You can read it in 1 Samuel 17, those of you who don't know the story. But here's what David did. He ignored unhelpful and demeaning comments. You have to ignore some things. If you want to get past this, some things you, you got to say, I, I don't care about that. Secondly, I ask questions that keep me informed. David asked, who is that Goliath? He asked questions. Sometimes in life, you got to ask, well, what is that? What is that that's intimidating me? What is that? So number one, he ignored the things that were unhelpful. He, college students, who cares that they don't think you're cute? Ignore those people. Who cares what they say? You want to fight somebody and get kicked out of school for somebody say something about you? Say something about me and put me in your mouth. I'm going to shoot you. For what? I ain't going to jail for you. I'm not going to live in some little cell because you said something. Talk all you want to talk. Amen. Ignore that foolishness. Amen. Come on, say man. Ignore that foolishness. What, 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 are you, what are you doing? So I ignore things, ask the right questions, 
Don't allow, thirdly, don't allow other people to dress me in their armor. David, when he went to fight Goliath, he said, I can't fight in your armor, Saul. I got to put on my own armor. I got to be me. I got to have to be me. I'm Ricky Temple. To be honest, I'm Ricky Ricardo Temple. I can't be you. I have to be me. Here's the fourth thing. I find strength in my past victories. When Saul looked at David and he said, David, you can't go fight. David said, I got my own testimonies. I had a lion come at me and I took, him, I took him out. I had a bear come at me and took him out. You got a story. This ain't your first rodeo. This ain't your, this ain't your first trial. This is not your first difficulty. Come on, church. This ain't the first time. This is not the first business deal. It's not the first financial crisis. It's not the first time God was with you then and God with you now. Come on, say amen, church. Stand up on your feet. It's time to go home. Come on, give God a big praise. Come on, give God a big shout. Come on, church. Come on, give God a big praise and a big shout. God, I believe you called us to victory and I believe you called us to trust you. You call us to avoid the traps. We'll talk about those next week, but we thank you and praise you. We come to you. Hold up your communion if you got it in your hand. Everybody get your communion in your hand. Where's your communion? You got it? Allow me to do this right. Go ahead and have a seat. I'm sorry. I got my little out of order. That's okay. That's okay. I got to do it right. I got to do it right. Got to get you out of here. Here we go. Get your communion in your hand. If you didn't get one, raise your hand. If you're home, go to the, go to the refrigerator, get your juice, get your bread. We're going to take communion every first Sunday. Have it ready for us so, so you can participate. Peel back the top layer, if you would, please. Hold the bread in your hand. Peel back the second layer. The Bible said as often you do this, you proclaim his death till he comes. You've been through fights before. He was there. This is a reminder that he'll be with you. As often as I take this, I say I know he's with me. His body was broken for me. His life was given for me. If you didn't get one of these, raise your hand. They'll bring one to you. Anybody else? Hold your bread up. Father, we hold this up as a symbol of victory. You've helped us before. You've been there with us before. Communion is not for perfect people, but for people who acknowledge they're not perfect. It's for honest people. We bring our brokenness to you, and we thank you for your healing touch. Go ahead and partake. Now, Lord, we thank you for your life, which is given for us. We embrace you. Thank you for your forgiveness. Go ahead and partake. And so we seal today that we trust you. We leave now with faith from this service, with, with confidence. The first day I preached the message, the first day as a teenager, I was scared to death. But a little soft word came to my mind. The same God who called you will be the same God who will go with you. You called us, God. You'll go with us. So now we rise together. Everybody stand. We, we, we're leaving. We rise. And Father, we believe today that the lives we've touched will never be the same, both in person, online, on demand, wherever they're watching this. And we believe that the hand of God will give us strength and victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, I'm about 10 minutes over, but it's your fault. We had a good time. Did you have a good time today? Come on, did you really have a good time? You know y'all can't clap. Y'all got that stuff in your hand. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for being a part. College students, we got food for you. You know that over here on the left. The rest of you watching online, thank you for being with us. You're important. I'll see you folks. Remember Prosperity Team this week. I'll see you in those small groups we talked about. Have a great day. Be blessed. Thank you for coming. Thank you for watching online. You're important to us. We love you, family. Bye-bye. Yeah, on the other side of this